wonderful time that we are spending together. And I just want to say thank you to the technical team for the wonderful worship, uh, just to put us in the right space, in the right worship space. I know that in South Africa, we have load shedding and everybody's driving around and trying to crisis manage a lot of things that it's happening. And one can lose uh, of moments we need to have to just slow time down and to uh, just be in the space and be in the moment. So my encouragement to each and every one of you uh, worldwide is to just take some time to breathe, to center and be in the place where, where we are mindful of God's presence and of his Holy Spirit. For what we are going to hear this evening is, is important for our development, for change and for transformation in families and societies. And uh, so with that, I think it's great that we start our, our session with prayer. So I'm also going to ask that Dr. Peter Jerry from Malawi, if he can open the session in prayer. I just want to check in. Dr. Peter, Dr. Peter Jerry, are you, are you with us? Just want to see if he's... Is in at the moment. All right. I don't think that he's logged in at the moment. Yes. Dr. Peter Jerry. He's not there, but John Zira is here now. Okay. Um, so Swira, would, would you mind uh, opening for uh, in prayer for us, please? Wow. Good evening. Good, Good afternoon. Excellencies. Thank you for inviting me to offer the word of grace as we start our session. Let's shall we bow down our heads and pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to bless your holy name, O God Almighty, for enabling us to assemble together to meet at this platform, O God Almighty to worship your holy name, to hear from you, O oh God, to keep in touch with what has been deposited in this GBR, JFLJ, which you have ordained from above. Thank you, Father God, for every participant who is going to partake to this grace which you have imparted in this wonderful organization. Thank you, Father God, even for the program director that you are going to give him wisdom, direction, as he directs the whole proceedings. Even everything, Mighty Father, who is going to be present us, we want to pray, oh God Almighty, to give them a word that is going to transform us, that is going to be meaningful, that is going to change our lives. And indeed, Mighty Father, that is going to give us knowledge. For you said, people perish because of lack of knowledge. Thank you, God Almighty, indeed even for every other, everybody who is going to make a comment and make, participate in whatever way, even the listeners across the globe, Mate Father God, we, we pray that you give them spirit of understanding, spirit of submission to your word, spirit, Mate Father, of appreciation for who you are and what you have done to us. In the name of Jesus Christ, we thank you and bless your holy name. Amen. Thank you, Your Excellency John Swira. We uh, we really were blessed by that uh, that prayer, and thank you so much uh, for stepping in. Really appreciate that. So, Your Excellencies, again a warm welcome to each and every one of you globally to today's session. And today's session, the title that we have is "Creating a Kingdom Culture Within Diverse Family Structures." Uh, and before I now announce our four panelists, esteemed panelists that will be presenting. Uh, I would just like to ask our technical team if they could uh, just set up the GBR video, the clip. For those of you who are joining us for the first time and you want to know what GBR Global Business Roundtable is all about, this particular video clip will explain it. And uh, this is why we are all working for this wonderful 
organization and why we have the mandate to do something wonderful for God on this earth and to do that through GBR. So technical team, thank you so much. The Global Business Roundtable has a God-given mission to focus on the holistic development of people in line with God's plan for His kingdom. The aim of the organization is to help members to grow spiritually, intellectually, to grow their networks and to participate in trade and investment opportunities, to also participate in mentorship and coaching programs and to expand their businesses. Our organization focuses on the holistic development of its members and invests its time and resources in developing people in key sectors, including the spiritual growth and development, which is critical to ensure and to foster strong moral values and, uh, and ethics, which we want to inculcate in all our leaders and standards so that we could contribute to the uh, production of a new breed of leaders that will shape and transform Africa and the rest of the globe. Since its launch in Johannesburg, South Africa in 2009, the Global Business Roundtable has impacted thousands of lives around the world. Ten years after its launch, this God-focused organization has a presence in more than 80 countries in the following regions. The Southern African Development Community, East Africa, West Africa, Central Africa, North Africa, Asia, Europe, North America, South America, and the Caribbean. GBR has strategic initiatives, programs, and platforms that facilitate growth and opportunities for its members. This is done through the global and local events such as World Congress, Prayer Camp, and the Thought Leader Summit, Women of Character Summit, Future Leader Summit, Trade and Investment Exhibitions, and GBR Sessions. These events create an environment for our members and partners to meet, interact, and create relationships that will develop their businesses and lives holistically. GBR also has a TV show called A New Thing, which seeks to educate, inform, challenge, empower and inspire one to live their best lives in line with God's purpose by bringing in several experts from various fields and sectors together. The Global Business Roundtable believes that informed and engaged leaders can make a positive change in the world. The GBR Academy was established primarily to address leadership capacity within the Global Business Roundtable leadership structures. The GBR platform is an online system that exists to create opportunities for personal and professional development. It is poised to further facilitate trade and investment opportunities across nations and industries for big business. For more information on our organization, please visit www.globalbusinessroundtable.com or contact us on plus 2711-242-8000. Thank you so much, technical team. I really appreciate the, uh, the video clip. And so welcome, if it's your first time being with us and sharing. And so we really hope that this will be a blessed session uh, for you as you enjoy uh, the perspectives, the global perspectives on, on issues, on subject matter, such as what we are going to share today. And the focus is on family and society. And uh, again, it is creating a kingdom culture within diverse family structures. And the reason why we thinking about this and, and uh, myself and the panelists, uh, we've been brainstorming and just uh, sending notes towards each other. Uh, the idea, and if I can position uh, this topic in a powerful way, we have got different family structures uh, in the world today. We've got uh, child-headed families. We've got families that are uh, headed up by uh, the elderly. We've got uh, not just a nucleus family that exists all over the world. And so we know that it is very um, diverse. And then we have cultures. The way that I run my family is different to the way that uh, Pastor Oyabanji uh, would run his family. And, and you, then again, what role does the, the wife play and the husband play? There's all these things that are playing out in today's society and a lot of confusion. And maybe this evening we will not get the answer. But I think it's important that we have a robust conversation and an interaction, an engagement with each other to keep the conversation going so that we can find out how can God's kingdom uh, bring restoration and wellness and wholeness into families 
where there's so much diverse thinking, there's so much happening in the world, how we respond to our outside world that places pressure on the integrity of the family. So I just wanted to position that for each and every one of you, your excellencies, just to kind of think about your own space, your own world, your own culture, your own region, your nation. How does God infiltrate through the love of Jesus Christ? How does he infiltrate and how does he transform? So we have four esteemed panelists that I would like to present to you. Uh, firstly, we're going to hear from uh, Pastor Oyabanji, and he's from Nigeria. Uh, you can see we've, we're going to shuffle it around a little bit. So uh, it shows there Mr. Keith Tripp, but we're going to hear a little bit later from him. Uh, so Pastor uh, Oluwatomi Oyabanji from Nigeria will go first. And then from there, we're going to do something very interesting. Uh, Mrs. Jackie Tripp, married to Mr. Keith Tripp from the UK, they are actually going to do the session together. So we'll give them a little bit more time, but it's going to be great to hear from them. Now, they told me that they're looking after grandkids and they're running around in the background. So it's going to be interesting. Uh, and I love that because that really shows family um, how it's going to play out. Uh, I'm not quite sure, but I think it's going to be wonderful that we hear from a husband and wife team of what they've experienced, what happens in Europe and in their context, uh, what can they share from their experience. And then we'll finish off powerfully with the session, a lady that uh, I have got a lot of respect for that's become a mentor to me that's reached out in the early days of me starting at GBR. Pastor Hilda Fetus, she's uh, a lot of these people actually need no introduction. They are stalwarts, they are generals in the spirit. Uh, and then she's going to sh also share from her vast knowledge and experience um, how she uh, would interpret the subject matter of uh, creating a kingdom culture within diverse family structures. So, with that, ladies and gents, uh, your excellencies. I'm going to introduce you to our first speaker. And so our first speaker is uh, Pastor Oluwatomi Oyabanji from Nigeria. So I know that they, the technical team will put a slide on with his CV. For those who do not know him, uh, we will, there we go, it's going to come on there. But I'll read it on the piece of paper in front of me. Uh, also, management. He is the partners in Africa. Hello, excellent. I think the audio is bad. Can we just continue?
good day. Um, I think uh, there was a network problem. Can can anybody say that you could hear me? Yes, we can hear you. We can hear okay. you. All right. I think I'm going to stop there because I don't know what's going to happen to my my connection. So, uh, Pastor Oliver Tommy, feel welcome. The floor is yours. Your 15 minutes starts now. Be blessed, sir. Okay. Thank Thank you very much, uh, Excellency Carl, for the privilege. I, I believe you can hear me also. Yes, we can. Thank you, Your Excellency. Okay. Good. So, thank you, everyone. Your Excellency, my name is Oyebanjolo Atomi Adoye. I, I will be speaking in, very, in this very uh, important topic on the, the place of. Please continue, Your Excellency. Creating a kingdom culture within diverse family structure. And that is the topic uh, for tonight. And I will be speaking on it. Uh, but basically, I will be doing the intro and waiting for other speakers to be able to add more value to the topic. So uh, the family structure is such that uh, God is interested. And I would like to start my text this evening from a popular, popular scripture in Romans, Romans chapter 12. The Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed. Uh, uh, we have a duty. Jackson, can you go forward? Also, are you Bungie? Are you there? Yes, I am here. There we go. Okay. Thank you. Are we on the right slide for you? Okay. So uh, I would like to introduce that, that there is a kingdom lifestyle and culture, and that every culture uh, in every kingdom, you know, the, the, the word kingdom comes from the illustration that there is a king that reigns within a domain. And the culture forms the way of life of the people, how they agree that things should be done, how their, their, their way, their relationship, and the way they deal with themselves uh, forms their culture. God himself set up the family as a base for the establishment of his kingdom on earth. God created the heavens and the earth, but he realized that for his kingdom to be established on the earth, he had to create the family. So the first that God created, apart from creating man, it was for the establishment of the family, kingdom on earth. And the first family was from God. And every other family that I've ever been, including yours tonight, is from him. So the family system So the family system was God's original was God's original concept of governance on earth. God created the family to establish and fulfill his eternal purpose on the earth. The family is an extension of God's glory and God's kingdom. So anytime we're talking about the family, we're talking about the extension of the glory of God, the extension of God's kingdom on the earth. And that is the view I want each one of us to have tonight. The view that your family is an extension of the glory of God, an extension of God's kingdom. And we can look at the first family God created on earth, the family of Adam and Eve. And that family was blessed with two sons. The Bible speaking in Genesis chapter four, uh, in verse 20, verse one and two, it said, and Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bore Cain and said, I have, I have gotten a man from God and she, and she again bore his brother Abel. And that was how the first family was established. But God did not just establish that first family. God also ensured that he gave guiding instruction 
guiding words, guiding principle of what the family should be, what the family should do, how the family should live. So those instructions that God gave the original family forms the way of life that the original family ought to establish and live with on earth. So God gave instruction to the first family and from the beginning. That instruction was to form a way of how they behave and how they relate. This was from the simple purpose of establishing a godly culture, having God as the center of it all. So the intention of God was that at the center of everything, God will be there. The, 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 the beauty of a kingdom family is that God is at the center of it all. God at that time always comes down to fellowship with the first family. And that was why God gave them that instruction. The Bible said in Genesis 2 that God built a garden and planted Adam there to cultivate it and to also take care of it. And God gave them instruction as to how they would go. So that is how the first family was established. So the first family was established by God and it was established with the purpose of extending his glory and extending his kingdom on the earth. We can continue. You can go ahead and excellence to the next slide. So God's plan, what is the plan of God? God's plan was to extend his kingdom on earth to the family system. The first government God set up on earth was that of the family until the enemy crept in to infringe on the value and God's intention. God began to relate to the world through the family system. So originally, if the family system had worked the way God intended it, based on his intention and his counsel and instruction, there wouldn't have been a problem, but there was an enemy. The enemy came in in Genesis chapter two to, to uh, chapter three to infringe on that value. And he was able to, 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 to negatively impact the intention of God concerning family. So the call of God for every one of us, even in redemption, is a call out of a failed family. The call of God is a call out of a failed family system into a family of God's people. If you really understand Colossians chapter 1, verse 13 to 14, is the Bible said, God has delivered us from the power of darkness and has translated us into the kingdom of his dear son, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. So we, we were translated from a old family life system to a new family life system, from a old kingdom to a new kingdom, from a kingdom of darkness to a kingdom of light, to the kingdom of God's family. And that's why every day on earth, the battle here is the battle of kingdoms the kingdom of God and the kingdom of darkness. But thanks be to God because we have been saved from the influence and power of the kingdom of darkness to be in the kingdom of his dear son. So we are in the kingdom of light. And by the glory of his word, we are being changed on daily basis from glory to glory as by the spirit of the Lord. So everyone that is in the kingdom of God he, he is living in the atmosphere of the light and the glory of God. And that is God's intention for every family. Let's continue, Excellency. Good. Can you continue, Your Excellency? Now, let, let's, let's quickly define uh, the word family. Family can be defined as a group of people who are related. The word family is not only used to refer to father, mother, and children in some cases. People are related in many other ways. You, you do not have to be related to somebody by blood to be in the family with them. Families comes in different setup and arrangement. So there are different types of family. We have the nuclear family. We have the extended family. We have the single parent family. We have the step families. We have the grandparent family. We have the unconventional family. Now, every one of us here tonight, we came for a particular family and we represent a particular family. And we, whether we like it or not, we have an extension to other larger family in, in, uh, in the world. So you see the family is here in Nigeria, but it has an extension somewhere in Europe, 
in Asia, in America, and other part of African countries. So the family can be extended. You could see a father, uh, a mother, a grandparent, an uncle, a cousin. So those form the extended family. But there are other kinds of families too, like, like Excellency Cole said, there are, there are families that are today existing that are single parents, whether the father alone or the mother alone, or because maybe they are divorced or because one is, is gone to be with the Lord. So you still see that family exists where there are single parents. And there are families that exist where there are uh, individuals, where there are. So we also have the, the unconventional families that, that existed where people still form a way of taking care of themselves at different ways. So what is the ideal family? An ideal family is one that is centered on the foundation of Christ and the principle of the kingdom as a way of life. That is an ideal family. And the family we're talking about tonight is a family that is centered on the foundation of Christ and the principle of the kingdom as a way of life. We can go ahead, Your Excellency. The family system, all the family on earth, irrespective of tribe, culture, race, find its source in God. And that is one of the biggest truths we need to understand tonight. That every family that we see on earth today, they find their expression in God. They, God is the source of every family. And that's why the Bible said in the book of Ephesians, it said, for this cause I bow my knees unto the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, of whom the whole family in heaven and earth is named. And, and every family that you see on earth today, right from the beginning. Now, I try to look at the Bible. I check through family that existed from the beginning, coming to the family of Noah, family of Abraham, down to the family of Isaac, Jacob, the nation of Israel. And after generation after generation, family have existed. And it is this family that existed, that formed community, that formed nations that we call, that, that we have today. Now, but if you look at examples, we have seen example of righteous family, family that even in the old covenant, the Lord adjured them to be righteous. Let me give an example. Noah's family. In Genesis chapter 7 verse 1, the Lord said unto Noah, come thou and all the house unto the ark, for thee have seen righteousness before me in this generation. So in that generation, there was a family that was exemplary. There was a family that was still representing the kingdom of God on earth. And God told Abraham also, he said, through thy seed shall all the family of the earth be blessed. So the family is an extension of God's glory, extension of his kingdom, an extension of the blessing of God. So we saw the story of Noah. Noah was a righteous family. We saw the story of Abraham and, and Sarah, and also upon them giving back to Isaac. The, Abraham was found to be a man that could work with God and his entire family. God commended him. He said, I know Abraham, and I know that he will command his children after him. So those are positive examples of family. Now, we saw the story of the family of Isaac, also in the Bible. The story of Isaac is one family that is of interest. Now, this is God's covenant people. God has a plan. God has a purpose. But because of challenge of influence upon that family, do you understand me, Your Excellency? The, 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 the family, if not for the mercy of God, will have been challenged. This is a family whereby you see the mother have preference over a particular child. And the, the father also have a preference over a particular child. And because of that, they all play their role to affect what happened to each of the children. Now, Esau was the first child. The father's intention was to bless him. Jacob was the second child. That was the preference of the mother. The mother wanted Jacob to enjoy the blessing. But this is a typical example of a family setting that is working under the covenant. But if not for the plan of God, what happened between Esau and Jacob will have brought to a total collapse, but for the mercy of God. That was why all the days of Esau's life, he vowed to slay his brother Jacob, but for the mercy of God. You remember that if you look at Genesis chapter 4, the same thing happened. When the devil interrupted and infringed on the family, the purpose of God was affected. A brother grew up annoyed and slay his other brother. Cain slay Abel under a family system. 
And these are the example. And if you also look at the family of Noah, there used to be a righteous family. After a while, the Bible testified that Noah's family was affected. So the culture and the system around us at that time can influence the well-being and the health of a family setting. That is the point I want to make. Please go to the next slide, Your Excellency. Good. So let us quickly look at the word culture. Culture is simply the way of life of the people that influence how they behave, they relate, or do things. And presently in the world, the word culture and the kingdom culture, there is the word culture and there's also the kingdom culture. But now, the way society is set up today, people are drifting away from the traditional way of doing things. People, the more people open up and accept different culture from all over the world, the more society are blending. What used to be conventional and acceptable is going through changes. Here are several variations of family setup that we have today. There are different things affecting the family today in different parts of the world based on the existing culture that man has developed for themselves, different from the culture that God intended for man. God has a plan. He has a purpose for man. He has a purpose for the family. He gave us a command on how our family should be structured, how we should relate, what we should do, the role of the father, the role of the mother, the role of the children, and how love, unity, peace, holiness, righteousness, the fear of God, transparency should reign in the family. But today, in this present age, a lot of issues, a lot of cultural impact has come. You see, the culture and way of life of people in different society is affecting greatly on the family system. However, for the purpose of this discussion, we will narrow down our, 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 our point on kingdom culture. And the coming of Christ on earth, I said, was for the establishment of his kingdom, particularly as it is in heaven. Jesus Christ said, let that kingdom come. Let that will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So what kind of culture do God want us to have? It is the heaven on earth kind of culture. The way of life in heaven is what God wants us to replicate here on earth at his, as his children. Please go to the next slide. So when we're talking about the kingdom culture, the question we should try to answer is, what is the culture of heaven that we need to allow to be established on the earth? Simply said, I said, kingdom culture. These are cultures that are born from biblical principle, biblical teaching, doctrine that set the pace for family living. And some of the attributes of kingdom culture is love. You, you hear the scripture said, he said, the Father, the Son, and the Spirit, they are one. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. It was based on that love today that we are redeemed. So God, Bible said, God himself is love. And he that believe God must love. Must love his fellow brethren. So one of the culture of the kingdom is the culture of love. And when love is practiced, the life of God, the glory of God, the way God wants us to live our life to the fullest becomes the, the order of the day. Another is faithfulness. Another is truth, integrity, servanthood, generosity, kind-heartedness, prayerfulness, unity, togetherness, forgiveness, and mercy. All of these attributes are part of the things that form the kingdom culture. These are the things that if they are put in place, if they have become part of our lives, actually, the kingdom culture are born out of the fruit of the spirit. Because when we actually grow to maturity and exhibit the fruit of the spirit as a husband, you know that you should love your wife based on the word of God. And if you love her, you will give her all you respect of what you get back in return. And as wife, you know that you should submit. And as children, you know that you should be obedient. So these are the things that form the way of life that establish the family system, the God kind of way. And this is the emphasis for tonight. Please, let's go to the next slide, Your Excellency. Quickly move to the next slide. Please move to the next slide. Good. How do we create a kingdom culture despite the present realities? I know a lot of people will ask a question. I know a lot of people will ask a question that how do we create that kingdom culture despite the realities today? A lot of things happening. A lot of damages has been done in homes, in family life, in marriages. And what do we do? Number one, we must be deliberate and determined. 
we can only create a kingdom culture when we are deliberate and we are determined. We, it, it requires our total commitment. Each one of us must see it as something that is a must. Ordinarily, the way people do things, we not want to change. The Bible says nobody will give up the old wine when the new come. So we must be intentional. And we've seen families that have practiced righteousness in the biblical days and in the contemporary days. We've seen people that one generation after generation, they are righteous. And up to this generation, they are still maintaining that righteousness as a family culture, as a way of life. They lead their children in the way of God. If you check the book of Deuteronomy, God actually expressed how parents should mentor and lead their children. So it's a deliberate thing. It's something we must determine to do. Number two, we must return to God, which is the original source of the family system, and return to do his commandment on developing new and godly family culture. And that culture can only be found from the word of God. The true culture is the culture that is brooded from the word of God. When the word of God becomes your living or virtue for living, that when the word of God is able to transform you. Remember the scripture I quoted? It said, be not conformed to this word, but be transformed by renewing of your mind through the word. He said, your word have I eat in my heart that I may not sin against you. He said, your word is a light to my path and a lamp to my feet. So that word has the power to transform us, has the power to change us, has the power to break us, has the power to reform us and make us better people in our respective area of life. Number three, we must engage deliberately and, and in practical mind renewal process in developing a new way of life. We must engage deliberately and be practical in our mind renewal process in developing a new way of life. Number four, we must engage in mentorship program and activity. A lot of family, I'm telling you the truth, one of the ways to save the family and the challenges around them today is through mentorship program and activities that will help them to be able to be able to, 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 to that will help them to be able to, to, to live the life the way they should do. So each person is able to understand his or her role. Each person is able to do what they ought to do in the way they should do it so that the name of God will be glorified. Number five, we must do prayer warfare. Beloved, the way things are today, the love of Christ is waxing cold in many homes. Many families have been lost. We are losing a lot of husbands. We are losing a lot of fathers. We are losing a lot of mothers. We are losing a lot of children. A lot of things are happening. The devil is, is ravaging the family. So we need high level of war, prayer warfare and continuous intercession to break through the stronghold of satanic influence over individual lives and families. So we must pray. We must come to pray and believe God to deliver the family from the stronghold that is holding them bound. You just see a man and a woman, after a long while, they give up. They throw away the towel so easily. It's not them, it's the devil. It's the enemy that is at work. Beloved, we must rise up and fight. We can love ourselves, we can be sincere, we can serve ourselves together. I'm telling you the truth. I tell people, I said, in marriage, for instance, or in family life, it is what you decide and you are committed to that will determine how your home and your family will be run. As the head of the family, I know that it's my, I know what the Bible demands of me as a role to play to provide the godly guidance, to provide the resources, to, to, to set the pace for my wife, for my children to follow. And that is why, you see, when I started my family, there are things I agree with my wife, and I said to her, this and this is what we will allow in our family. We know we have access to buy a DSTV in our home. The first 10 years of our marriage, we never had one. Why? We, we refuse to allow our children to be influenced with information, with messages, with, with programs that will determine and shape their way of thinking. So we only expose them to Christian messages and things that will shape their mind in a godly way. And it has helped us. So it has helped us because now our children go everywhere. They are able to defend their rights because we set the standard of how we choose to run our family as, as couples. So we must organize family rehabilitation clinics. This thing is lacking. A lot of places, there, there are no clinic where husband and wife and family can go to to manage and rehabilitate, rehabilitate challenging families and individuals. There is need for rehabilitation processes. If we must 
establish the true kingdom culture. The churches, the ministers of God must set up family rehab in the church. We preach the kingdom message of people getting saved and going to heaven. But there are many issues that are killing people more than that message. So we must create room to check on family. Let's do family diagnosis. Let's sit husbands, wife, and children together, talk to them, ask them questions. You'll be surprised that you will dig to a lot of things that you never knew exist. Number seven, we must seek counseling and knowledge from family experts. I think it's time that our ministers, our pastors, our, our overseers in churches to identify family expert within the body of Christ. Because all of this time we preach, things we preach on the altar, and we don't have time to preach those things that we impact on the life of people. That's why I'm thanking God for a platform like the Global Business Roundtable that is pro providing solution holistically in line with God's principle. These things that we are talking about today, in most of the church program, go go anywhere, you will never see them being preached. You only see people preaching things that affect the faith and the kingdom in terms of people going to heaven and becoming better Christians. But there are things that when they are not undo, they can affect our society goals. They can affect our, our politics, our governance, things even happen um, in our society. That is the family. If we miss it in the family, we have missed it in the society. And number eight, we must, we must, we must all take kingdom responsibility and showcase the glory of God through the ideal kingdom. Family. Each of us must promise ourselves that my own family will be an ideal kingdom family for people to, re to reflect the glory of God. And if we all choose to be the ideal husband, the ideal wife, the ideal man of the house, the ideal father, the ideal mother, the ideal grandmother, the ideal grandfather, the ideal uncle and cousin, we will end up shaping the world. Because if we get it right, most of the problem we face in the society today, they have their root in our family. So we can create a kingdom culture despite the present realities. Please, let's go to the next slide as I begin to round up. Can we go to the next slide? Good. How do, okay, the next slide I would like to talk is that how does negative family lifestyle and culture affect the interest of God's kingdom? Number one, every time there is a breach of the family security, the enemy takes advantage and he steals the glory of the Lord away from the family. Beloved, what happened in the family of Adam and Eve, many of us didn't know. It was that the glory of God was taken away. What God gave the first family was his glory. That was why the Bible says, all have sinned and fell short of the glory of God. When the devil broke the security of the family, and that was because there was no understanding. There was no light. And because where there is darkness, the devil, have, the devil has his free day. So the devil was able to break through that security and the glory was scattered away. But I pray for us today that the glory of God that is supposed to manifest through our family will never be stolen away in Jesus' name. And where it has been stolen, it can be restored. God's agenda for mankind is distorted. And sometimes it is being destroyed when the family lifestyle and culture is affected. We have seen today that many persons have lost their children either to drug, either to lifestyles that are contrary, lost their wife, lost their husband. But the truth of the matter is, it is not the loss of those ones that matter, but destiny, the program of God, the agenda of God is being affected. Great destinies are being aborted. Anytime we miss it in the family setting, in terms of the role of the husband, the role of the father, the role of the woman, the role of the mother, the role of the children, if we don't put them in proper perspective, it ends up aborting God's destiny. There are a lot of destiny, if you see in the Bibles, that were aborted because people did not play their role. And I want to say something before I round up. You realize that there are families, I saw in the Bible, there are families that were run by single parents in the Bible, and they still succeeded in establishing the counsel of God. And there are, so God can use any individual. Whether you say today I'm a single parent, Please, if you are a single parent, but you are a vessel that has surrendered your heart to God and allow God's word to rule in your life, God can still use you as his extension of his glory to raise a great family. 
So the good news is that no matter the category of family we fall into, whether a nuclear family, whether a single parent family, whether an extended family, whether even a family whereby the biological parent were no more alive. Look at the story of Esther. Esther's biological parents were not alive, but the uncle took the role. The uncle took the role. Mordecai took the role of, of the parent and still raised Esther a brilliant and a champion in her generation. We've seen the story whereby a, a, a prophet's wife, the prophet had died. The woman still took her, her decision to follow God. She went to seek on the um, prophet Elisha, and Elisha ministered to her. She had sufficiency to take care of her family. We've also seen a situation whereby the father was able to take care of the children. And we saw in the Bible, in the times of the world, where many parents failed. And because they failed, their children's destiny were aborted. But my prayer for us is that in spite of what culture we have, whether African culture, whether European culture, whether American culture, the good news tonight is that the culture of the kingdom is the supreme culture we must all abide to, to make a better society, a greater church, and a greater nation. Please, the next slide. The next slide, Your Excellency. Okay, I want to say this, that kingdom-based family culture is possible despite the present reality. We raise a godly family that love, we can raise a godly family that love God and will fulfill his will on the earth. God bless you, Your Excellency. I will allow the other, other panelists to talk more on this. God bless you. Thank you, Your Excellency Carl, for this. Holding this, uh, the network, the network is through low. this again. There was so many. Hello, Excellency. We can hear you swiftly. We can hear you faintly, excellent. All right, I've and and now, sir, I'm trying a different network. We can hear you now, sir. Is it better now? It's better now. <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you for that feedback. Um, uh, thank you, Pastor Olo Tommy. I think there's so many nuggets there that we can learn from. And listening back to this particular recording is going to help uh, all of us, uh, me including. There were so many nuggets that you you mentioned. Uh, for instance, you said uh, extension of glory of God, God's kingdom of God. That's the whole idea of God is that he was in the middle of it all. And, and the question is, is God in the middle of everything that we're doing, even in our mess, even in the destruction. You were talking about um, God is intentional, an intentional God when it comes to expanding his kingdom. Uh, and it made me think about how intentional am I regarding the way I'm leading my family, being a husband, uh, being a father in those cases, and being a friend. Um, you spoke about that the kingdom of God is centered around the principle of the kingdom as a way of life. And I love that where you said about Jesus Christ and the way of life. Uh, and then the coach in me started to ask some very interesting questions about heaven on earth is the kind of culture that we need to create where it's about love, faithfulness, truth, integrity, etc. And I started question marking and inspecting my heart as David did to say, uh, search my heart, oh God, make it ever true. And I think today it's, it's really about whatever position we have in a family, are we, are we really being intentional with regards to God's kingdom uh, on earth in our space? Uh, and I was thinking about um, a lion that was pouncing on a, a very weak deer that is veering away from its, its, uh, the animals from, from its family. And I think that's what happens in the world when either our children or when a church sees families that are not showing up on a Sunday anymore. Uh, they kind of staying shut off or isolating. That's when as a church, we should really start uh, pushing in. And I love your 
Then finally, the idea of a family rehab clinic. I think you and I can talk more about uh, how do we strategize around that because I think with GBR that would absolutely be a wonderful vision and a goal that we can create globally for our family. So thank you so much for that. Um, I really appreciate and I know a lot of our listeners and viewers are also appreciating that. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. Thank you, Excellency. So, uh, Your Excellencies, we are now going to go to our next two speakers. <clears throat> and so uh, I'm going to ask our technical team, uh, we're going to do a ladies first. So, uh, Mrs. Jackie Tripp from the UK, I'm going to quickly read her uh, CV. And then also Mr. Keith Tripp from the UK. Uh, I'm going to read it a little faster just to look at our time. So I hope that the interpreters can uh, keep up with my reading. So as you can read there, Jackie is married to Keith and together they have six children and 13 grandchildren. So has been able to observe the effectiveness and impact of education over many years. She has been involved in teaching primary age children, four to 11 years old for over 20 years, as well as leading and teaching in Sunday school. Jackie's passion is music, singing as a soloist in a choir and leading worship and had been responsible for music coordination throughout the primary school. She has given uh, voice coaching to many children and led school choirs to great success over many years. Uh, throughout the pandemic, Jackie and Keith have had responsibility for two of their grandsons aged five and 12 when they came to them in January, 2020, just as COVID-19 was starting to disrupt the world. So Jackie has seen close hand in both the family and work settings, the pandemic's impact on social well-being, mental well-being and education from primary through to secondary age children. So uh, I just want to officially welcome uh, Her Excellency Mrs. Jackie Tripp. Uh, I will hand over to both of you in a moment as I quickly read um, His Excellency Keith Tripp's CV. So if the technical team can just put that up for us, please. And then I'm going to hand over to the two of you. So Mr. Keith Tripp, uh, also a colleague of mine uh, at the GBR and GFFJ, Mr. Keith Tripp is a business executive, trainer, property investor, and has worked significantly with groups that have multiple companies globally to transform their organizations from fragmented portfolios of companies into international network organizations with a single strategy. He has over 25 years of experience in senior leadership, management of multinational private engineering companies, faith-based academic college, and nonprofit institutions bringing vision, insight, and growth. He trained through an apprenticeship as an engineer completing a higher national diploma in mechanical engineering throughout his varied managerial career, which was focused on technical team management, business development, sales, and strategic marketing, he gained a Master of Business Administration, a postgraduate diploma in marketing, a Master of Applied Theology, and he is a chartered marketer. He spent many years in a local church leadership and witnessed many Christians who struggled to fully pull their faith in, put their faith into practice through business. So has coached several business leaders in how to live out their faith in the workplace to enable them to excel in their God-given calling. He has successfully navigated the challenges of applying Christian ethics when working in around 20 different countries. His passion for seeing people fulfill their God-given purpose is central to his life's focus. For over 30 years, he has influenced and been instrumental in the development of many people and has successfully facilitated business growth at well above the average rate for their sector. So. Mr. Keith Tripp and Mrs. Jackie Tripp, uh, I hand over the floor to the two of you. Have fun. Uh, give us your wonderful experience. Um, uh, Jackie, I must say, I'm growing very close to your husband, and I would like to get to know you even more, but I'm uh, really loving and looking forward to what you're going to present today. So the floor is yours. Okay. Thank you. So... Okay, so uh, thank you very much and uh, greetings, uh, Your Excellencies. Um, 
fantastic subject for us to be talking about. We've, uh, well, Jackie and I have been uh, discussing the subject since we, uh, we, we were asked about speaking uh, and felt quite encouraged that there's, uh, there's uh, certainly some insights that we are able to bring. Uh, Pastor Olio Banji was talking about the ideal family situation and uh, the breakdown of that. And unfortunately, those breakdowns uh, are, are not confined to non-Christian families. Both Jackie and I, our, so myself are actually married for a second time. We both were married to Christians in Christian uh, marriages uh, and thought that they were going to last forever. But actually, through various uh, circumstances and situations, uh, they both uh, broke up. My, mine uh, was in 1999, uh, Jackie's was in 2000. And actually, we, uh, God, God really sort of led us back together because we had known each other about 20 years earlier. And uh, I, I was a church leader uh, in uh, a, a thriving newish church and when my breakup happened. And I said to God, I don't want to be going into that church and he said to me I want you to go up to this other church and so I said okay I'll, I'll just go and be there and this lady came up to me and said um, hello Keith how are you I haven't seen you for a long time and uh, I said oh, hello yeah I'm fine good etc and then when she left I said to the person next to me who was that <laughs> <laughs> and actually it uh, it turned out it was Jackie um, so uh, over, over the time then, after Jackie had, um, his marriage had broken up, we felt God talking to us to get together. And uh, uh, I already had three children, three girls, which uh, I had uh, on my own at that time because my, my first wife had, had left, leaving me with the three girls. And Jackie had three children, uh, two, two boys and a girl. And uh, here, here now is... Uh, a picture of our family hmm. so uh you you can see that uh, in fact there's there's a grandchild missing off this this picture but uh, uh you you can see the family and it, it is extended uh because our children have got partners uh and they've blessed us with uh, 13 grandchildren in fact two of our our children are still single so um uh, they uh, they haven't yet blessed us, or or actually, you know, with not with any grandchildren at the moment. Um, but but we're expecting that to come. So we're expecting thirteen to grow. But this is our family, and uh, we both wanted to really demonstrate our Christian beliefs when we came together, and we made sure that uh, we we let all of the children continuously know what we believed and how we intended to live our lives. And so Jackie and I were very, very conscious about making sure that what we did demonstrated the right things to the children. And so when we came together, in, in fact, it was very complicated getting remarried. Uh, the church I was in and leading in at that time, which was a different church, but I, I, we weren't registered. We were a fairly new church. We weren't registered for marriages. So we thought we'll go to Jackie's church and they said well you're divorcees we 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 couldn't marry you and so then we're going well what are we going to do because we really wanted to make sure that to our children we we demonstrated that we were going to come together under God before we came together as a couple and uh, actually that uh, that the answer to that was we actually got married in a, a registry office went home to our own homes came together the, the following day where we had the big celebration and uh, marriage before God. And that really was then our, our wedding day. And so God has taken us on from there with the six children. And uh, he's, it's not been an easy life, as you can probably imagine. Two families coming together. But actually, what God has done is he's enabled us to live the Christian life and continuously demonstrate it in the way we do things 
to the children and to the grandchildren. And Jackie will talk a little bit more in a moment about some of the conversations that, that we have been able to take part in. And actually, Jackie and I thought uh, a number of years ago that we were now on our own. Our youngest daughter, Cara, was at university and there was no other children living at home. And so we were, were living our, our lives together as a couple. Cara decided to come back from university. So she had then started living with us again. And then on the 16th of January, 2020, Jackie's phone rang and it was the police and social services ringing from the school where Hannah, my youngest daughter, had five children went. And uh, they were saying, we are taking the children off of your daughter. Will you help out by having the children? We were shocked. <laughs> we didn't know what to say. We thought, although we realized that the life that my youngest daughter was living wasn't great. We didn't think it was awful. We didn't think it was that bad that they would take the children from her. But actually she'd had an operation in the beginning of 2019, which hadn't gone that well. And she'd been getting weaker and she had got so weak, she actually was not caring for the children. And from outside, we didn't really see that we couldn't see that because when we saw the children they were bright and laughing and fun and so it was quite a lesson to us about what is actually happening in family environments so she became uh, weaker and weaker and actually um, she is the girl lady at the front of this picture, the one with the, the bobble hat and the, the, the uh, you know, she, she was 33. This was in December, 2019. Unfortunately, in April, 2021, she passed away. And we were still at that point talking to social services and going through a whole very long process about how the children would be cared for, would be looked after. And we still at that stage thought that it was going to be a shortish short term that we were gonna have the children. When we were first asked, we were asked to look after them for a few weeks. Those children now are with us uh, permanently and uh, we've had them with us for two and a half years. And so our life, our family situation has changed quite dramatically. But to get to that point, we had to go through quite a significant approval process. But let me just show you Hannah and her family so you've got some context. That was Hannah in 2020 with her five children. We actually agreed that my ex-wife would look after three of the children. That's Naya, Brooke and Celie. And Jackie and I would look after the two children who were probably considered to be those who needed the most help, which was the oldest, Bradley, and the youngest, Freddie. And so going through that process to be approved as foster carers, because even though they're our grandchildren, we were being approved as foster carers. We had to pass through their questioning, which was quite intense. And actually it got quite difficult because they told us that we could not enforce our beliefs on the two children. Freddie had said he believed in God, Bradley had said he didn't. And so they were telling us that we had to very much respect that in the way that we brought them up. And then we hit a quite a challenging point. 
there's quite a big push in the in the UK around the LGBTQ plus community. And we were asked, what's your view on this? So we gave them our godly view, which they didn't like. However, we said, but that doesn't mean to say that we don't love the people of the LGBTQ plus community. In fact, Jackie is considered to be a second mum to someone who belongs to that community. So it's a very difficult situation when you're enacting with the worldly ruling powers and you're trying to make sure you do the godly things. So although it was challenging going through that process, we learned a lot. We also went through lots of parenting training courses, quite interesting at our age, but we learned a lot of things. You see, we don't normally teach parents how to parent. And as we've been hearing, wouldn't it be good if we had that environment to be able to teach parents how to parent? And in fact, in uh, GFFJ, I'm actually trying to establish a program, Foundations for Families, to do just that. So all of these discussions delayed our approval, but eventually we were, we were approved. And the interesting thing is throughout that process, we had many, many social workers come to visit us. And we used to get comments like this. This is a very busy house, but it's always so peaceful. And it's always so peaceful because God resides, lives, is outworked within our family situation, within our home. And on that note, I'm going to hand over to Jackie to speak about how we do that, how we create a kingdom culture within our diverse family situation. Thank you. There are um, a couple of things that I always think about um, before I deal with situations. Um, there's a, a saying um, here in England, what would Jesus do? Um, what would Jesus do? So in any situation, what would Jesus do about that? Um, and John 17 says, we are in the world, but not of the world. And so when people come along our path that are diverse, that have different views, um, that really is a scripture that we live by because we are called to love the people. And Keith and I have had to face many situations that to be honest, parenting the first time round, we never faced. Our eldest grandson talks about being non-binary. Then he'll talk about being gay. Then there are other things that he'll talk about. And because we are accountable to social services, we're we're not allowed to say, well, that's wrong. We want you to have another view. <laughs> um, and so our approach has had to change. But first and foremost, we are Christians and we honor God and very much in taking on the responsibility of the grandchildren under the support of social services um, because Keith and I stood our ground and shared because we were asked for our own opinion, um, not what we would do, but they wanted to know our own personal opinion 
um, and we shared our own personal opinion based on the word of God, because that is how we've lived. And that is how we continue to live. Um, and they actually <laughs> um, took a long time to come back to us. They struggled. Social services struggled with our personal view. But one thing we've learned to do is love the person. What would Jesus do? Jesus would love the person, but not the act of sin. And so that's what we've learned to do. And in doing that, we've come across quite a few situations. Um, schools these days want to be seen as celebrating diverse. Social services and the government and leadership want to be seen as celebrating the diverse. I think sometimes it's because they're afraid to stand up for anything else. But it's very important to, um, sorry, I've just been interrupted. It's very important that in it all, we have remembered what the word of God says and think about what would Jesus do. Jesus would welcome the sinner. Jesus would welcome the person. He would love the person. And so in order to have influence for God, in order to have influence in these young people's lives we first of all have to build a relationship and that takes time and we have to show that we're interested in the person the young person needs to know that they're valued in some way and so that is always a starting point now the eldest grandson is very quick to jump on any bandwagon that's going at the moment. So it might be LGBTQ, it might be the non-binary, it might be <coughs> being an atheist, it might be, and he, he'll come home day, day by day, he's changed his view because one of his friends has told him to, or... He wants to join a group because he thinks it's nice. And really, things like that are being very encouraged um, by the whole of society. And what we see is that young people become very confused. Um, and they don't know who they are or what they are. And what we do is we pray and we wait and we wait for an opening. And then when we get opportunity, we chat. And very recently, um, the eldest grandson in the car, just out of the blue, asked me a question. Nanny, do you believe that all unborn babies who die go to heaven so just out of the blue came out with that and and I was able to say yes I do and then we continued the conversation it completely opened up a conversation and it led me to be able to say the reason I believe that is because I know God as my saviour and my faith is built on a foundation. And I pray and I trust God and I know God. And then I was able to then talk to him about, it's good to understand what your beliefs are and where they come from and what you've built them on. 
you can't just build a belief on something someone said without exploring it, without looking into it, without building on it, without taking time with it. And so I was able in that opportunity to, to share that with him. And really that, that is what we do. We, we look for opportunities. We can't jump on every single thing that we see because there are so many, so many needs. But we prayerfully wait. And, and what we've learned is that Keith and I have to work together. So in guiding the young people, in standing for Christ in our home, we have to work together. We have to be in agreement to show that the leadership is strong in order to have an influence to those who need it. So what would Jesus do? And I think about that in every situation. Or what would Jesus say? Because that is our purpose on this earth. When people, people we work with, people, people in our families, people in our extended families, when they meet us, do they meet Christ? When people live with us, are they living with Christ? And that is what wholeheartedly we want those, we want anyone, anyone who comes to stay, anyone who's part of our family in any way, we want that to be our forethought, our foundation. And I think I will end by saying judgment is for God. It's not for us. But our responsibility is to direct them to him, direct them to God so that they have an opportunity of God working in their lives being supported by us and by family. And just to, to conclude on that, Hannah, as I said, passed away last year. About six months before she passed away, I said to her, you know what we believe. And the, the thing you most need to do is make sure you're right with God. And she went, back to church she recommitted her life and at the funeral there was a prophetic word that said be assured she's safe with me in my arms if you live the life for christ in the family you will see the fruit thank you very much sure thank you so much uh, Your Excellencies, uh, Jackie and Keith. Um, I wrote a few words down here while you were talking, and I was just saying it was uh, heartfelt, vulnerable, and intimate. And, um, yeah, I just think, you know, I don't want to just rush over that moment because the two of you didn't speak just from your head. You spoke from your heart, uh, and I appreciate that. And I think many people that are listening and that are on this platform uh, yeah, again, our condolences with, with, with your daughter and what you as a family have had to go, go through. Um, yeah, I think there's other people that, that can probably, you know, uh, empathize and sympathize with what you've had to go through. And then you still had to, you're navigating your own emotions, but now you're navigating government and policies and systems and people wanting to move and shift kids around. So you've got to have two hats and shift them. It's almost like you don't have time to grieve. And um, yeah, I just, I, I so value that you've shared your heart. You've uh, given us a, a little bit of a glimpse into your family life. And I love that you spoke on certain topics mm -hmm. that are almost taboo topics, 
And that's what I think was important for family and society and for this sector, and also for your foundation for families. And I think that is phenomenal uh, that you've created that. And I think anybody that would want to know more about that, uh, Keith can probably make uh, contact with you to find out more how they can get involved. I'm sure that will be something powerful uh, for us going forward. And um, I just saw this whole thing about, it's a clash of systems, a clash of kingdoms. Um, yeah. Pastor Yobanji spoke about that, light and darkness. And there was a saying about, we, if we don't stand for something, we'll fall for everything. Mm -hmm. And I think that is when, you know, uh, Jackie, we're talking about identity. Who am I? And we as parents, whatever the situation at home is, is we have to navigate our children into who they are and let them find themselves because they will constantly ask questions and be bobbing around from one opinion to the next. So I absolutely love that. And I, I finish off with this and I wrote over there, it's time for us to have courageous conversations with each other and with our children and even with our parents. We can't just skirt issues anymore. So thank you so much for opening up the topic, the conversation. I'm sure we can still have much of that over a good cup of coffee or tea. I don't know if you drink coffee in the UK, oh. um, but we, <laughs> we, also, we also have wonderful rooibos tea here in South Africa. Um, but yeah, I look forward to having a cuppa with you so that we can explore this a little bit more. Thank you so much. I honor the both of you and bless your family. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. So your excellencies, uh, we're in the final stretch and uh, a lady that I would like to um, present to you is when I started at GBR and I was very nervous and I was like, I don't know what I'm doing here. How's this gonna work? The Pastor Hilda Petu is the one lady that I can probably say, I'm easy to call her my mother because she opened her arms wide open for me and I have every time I sit with her she has a nugget she has something beautiful to say she's encouraging she's the the most fantastic woman and I can understand when I heard in GBR uh, what she has done uh, for GBR in the culture of GBR and GFFJ and also with the convener Prof. Seleku um, I do esteem you Pastor Hilda very highly and so before I give you the floor, um, Your Excellencies, I'm just going to read a little bit of her uh, CV. And it reads as follows. Uh, Pastor Hilda uh, Cecilia Petu is a passionate, simple woman of God, ordained pastor since July 2003. She has been married since 1975, blessed with a daughter and son, four grandchildren, and wait for it, four great grandchildren. She is an associate pastor at Living Spring Bible Church, Soweto, Johannesburg, South Africa. She is a qualified health and wellness occupational EAP practitioner, life and spiritual coach. Pastor Hilda served in many multinational industries as a senior manager and has been a CEO of the Food Gardens Foundation for the past 20 years impacting many communities in South Africa and Africa through poverty alleviation projects, whilst helping to raise household food security levels through agricultural training courses. She lives to love and serve the Lord through all the people she meets with respect, compassion, and excellency, whilst epitomizing Matthew 23, verse 39, which is one of GBR and GFFJ's founding scriptures. She has served in GBR, GFFJs in various portfolios, amongst them as the head of Women of Character South Africa since its inception. Pastor Hilda has been instrumental in launching GBR roundtables throughout South Africa and Africa. She has won awards in GBR, GFFJ, as well as the Soweto Regional Business Achiever Award as Social Entrepreneur of the Year in 2012 and a finalist boss of the year 2013 award. So some wonderful accolades, but more than that, that I think the greatest accolade is her heart and her love for people and for life. So uh, Pastor Hilda, your excellency, your 15 minutes starts now, the floor is yours. Thank you, excellence, Chas. <laughs> what a mouthful <laughs> of that, but I'm just humbled by that, those kind words when you're introducing me and 
I believe it's all to the glory of the Lord. Um, thank you so much for the opportunity to be part of this esteemed panel of people who have who love the Lord and love the work of God and love GBR and GFJ and who are determined to make sure that the vision moves forward. I am, I, I am so, so blessed by um, Pastor Oyabanji's presentation and, 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 and Keith and, and his wife's um, testimonial presentation. All this says to me, uh, the Holy Spirit has, a, has planned this in such a, a different way because he, he, he became very personal in how we are hearing the testimony of Keith Treat and his wife and how God plunged them into a family that's supposed to be sort of diverse or dysfunctional in a way. But like um, um, his wife says, what would Jesus do? You know, I love that. But I want to go quickly into what um, the Holy Spirit has laid in my heart because this led me to think deeply and on what we are saying about family in these end times, because we know for a fact, as Pastor Awebanje quoted so many scriptures that are showing that family is under serious attack and not from each other as human beings, but from the kingdom of darkness, because we are in the kingdom of light as families and God has ordained us because he ordained the first family, Adam and Eve, but that first family also fell into dysfunctionality because the devil had a plan. Whilst God had everything good, when he said in, 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 in the Bible, eh, 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 dom, you know, be fruitful and multiply and dominate. So we have a dominion mandate as a family of God, but it, it has not been easy to take that mandate because family has been under attack throughout all the years. So it is clear, you know, to all of us, as we talk through this topic, that, you know, the Holy Spirit led me to just go into a bit of research. You'll see it in one of, in a few of my slides, the first three slides, I think, where it's true that our world is incredibly diverse, you know, and family, families are different with varying configuration, beliefs and cultural norms and, and personal practices. So we cannot doubt that our world is, is, is completely diverse, you know. And when we go to the next slide, Lindo, we talk about people falling in love. You know, the next slide, please. Now, we talk about the multicultural family where people fall in love in a globalized world. You know, this globalized world is, is formed of families, you know, of couples. We have different nationalities who speak different languages, who come from different cultures, you know. We don't even look the same in color, if you like. But then we get to a point, the next slide, please, where the scientists have done some research, as you can see. I've got very interesting um, a sociologists called Giddens, Gumbriam and Holstein, who went into a lot of research just to look at what family really is. And they argued about the meanings of families, the possibilities and the boundaries, you know, that are so profound, that are negotiated or even constructed in institutions such as schools, workplaces, healthcare places, even religious communities, which are the churches. And they even wrote a book that says, what is family? And in that book, something came out. Next slide, please. What came out of that book is that they, they, it's called, what is family? In, in this uh, book, it says, uh, 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 there, there, there are more valued um, families, like diverse families that are more culturally valued than others. They are more accepted and legitimate, seem to be legitimate by society, you know. And the nuclear family is one of those families that comprise of a male and female parent, their children, who flourish as a cultural, you know, family. But having said that, we realize that more and more that structure is changing. That structure is no longer working, you know, as a nuclear family. 
we talking, can we have the next slide, please, Olindo? You know, that structure, as much as it's more accepted, you know, many people are not accepting that structure as the norm. And unfortunately, it comes with a lot of maybe what Pastor Ayo Banja calls uh, um, unconventional families. I won't call them, uh, 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 well, they're unconventional because they are not according to the convention. For some, to speak the truth, uh, are those who have two fathers and an adopted child. Maybe one was married before and then they fell in love with another maid. Or two women who now have come with two children, but their mother and father. So we can see that that family is totally diverse. You know, so uh, this is a global uh, uh, picture that that families are painting out there. And, and I love what um, uh, Mrs. Uh, uh, Tripp said, is that we are in this world, but not of this world. So we are in our an environment that really more and more is saying to us, what is family according to what we believe in? And how are we going to uh, negotiate or manage the environment in the world as, as, as we, we are a glo global uh, community and we have to be active citizens that are seen to be doing the right thing according to the worldly principles. I mean, I've seen this argument between the social systems and the world and, 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 and the church and where the, the, the family's uh, values like Christianity are being challenged by some of the systems of the world especially when we want to adopt, I know that. And so what I would love to do for this, um, just for the sake of this, say a bit about how South African families are right now, as I live in South Africa as a country, and obviously in a black culture, and, and have a few personal experiences, because I've worked in health institutions, I've, I've, I've worked in communities, I've counseled people through the church, I, I work, I live in a township. So I'm very exposed to diverse families, which are quickly becoming dysfunctional, if you like, and they are breaking down daily. I love what, what the, the trip said that unfortunately, this is not limited to, 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 to non Christian families. They, every culture, every religion is going through diversity. But some of that diversity is breaking down the core of the family as we know it, as we grew up knowing, you know? One of the things that having grown in a family of mother, father, uh, and, and, and 13 siblings, I was number 12. I grew up in that culture where it says mother, father, and 13 kids. And they all were my mother and father's kids. And all we were taught is to be affectionate and be expressive, but be polite, be polite. And, and Ubuntu is, is, the, is the culture of South Africa that aspects, affects every culture. But right now we're experiencing an onslaught of pain where there's many family killings, suicides, fathers poisoning children, mothers poisoning father and children. So we're seeing that the attack on the family hasn't stopped with Adam and Eve. Can we see the next slide, please? Next slide, please, Lindo. And I just want to go through this. If you look at this statistics, which I'm not going to go through, it's talking a lot about what the type of households are, you know, which I, it talks to what I said, that it's different races, you know, and nationalities. Now, I would love to, to, to actually go to the next slide, please, Lindo. And now this world is full of orphans. In South Africa, just South Africa, we've got 7.5 million of orphans. And they increased by 11% since 2002. And it could be more because of the pandemic we just had. Single parent, I loved what uh, Pastor Oyevanje did when he quoted the Bible and said, some of the single parents have been very successful in grooming their children. And like Timothy, Timothy became a servant of God at an early age. And he was reminded of the culture of his family where his grandmother, Lois, taught him principles 
of how a family should be. So where I'm coming from is that as much as we can accept, you know, that the world is changing, we still remain as Christian in, in the space where we need to say, how then do we negotiate diverse families as Christians? Next slide, please. How do we as kingdom citizens actively living in a world that is said we are of the world, but do not you know, belong to the world? One of the three things that came to my mind was that we need to be brave. When you're brave, when you're bold, you, you will not become like an ostrich where you hide your head when you see issues that need to be negotiated, issues that need to be discussed like Charles said, but we cannot as Christians because we, we believe that our principles are entrenched in the Bible, become cowards and say, no, 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 we're not going to touch this. We're not going to say this. Be authentic. Be the one who's born again spiritual, a child of God, who does not, who, who, who says things as they should be and, and, and delivers God's word truthfully and be mindful and sensitive about the people God has put you around in the community. And the best thing that I would say is to look at families, regardless of how diverse they are, with God's love. Once we take on the lenses of Jesus and say, what would Jesus do to this family? Then that love is going to override a lot of the judgment and the faults that we see. More than anything, work our own salvation with trembling. Because sometimes we miss it as Christians, where we want to work other people's salvation, not wanting to, 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 to see our own fault. And we end up not seeing the plank in our own eyes because even our own families are going through the same uh, 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 diverse problems and challenges the world is going through. But if we want to, 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 to be authentic, remember you have your own salvation to work, but without neglecting the other child of God that the Bible says, go ye into the world and make disciples without trampling on their rights as they believe them. So the next one says, let's let God's wisdom be the last to speak. Next slide, please. Once God's wisdom speaks to us, you know, as congregations of the kingdom, we, we need to strive to mirror the demographics or, or socioeconomic mix of our urban neighborhood. The churches are rooted in. When we're in a community, how do we win souls if we separate ourselves and do not mirror the people that are surrounding the building or the church as a whole? Because these are the same people who would see, look at us and see Jesus or see how Jesus would treat them if he was here. Not like the woman caught in adultery, where Jesus said, anyone who has, who has no sin, let him cast the first stone. As Christians of kingdom, God's kingdom, we are united by God's love in every fellowship, you know, we have in our daily lives. So we must always reflect and be united by love, not our differences, not our cultural differences, not our, 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 our color, you know, and, 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 and make diversity reflect how God saw. You know, when I was reading this, I realized that God bless every family in the book of Genesis, in chapter 12, verse 3. He said he blessed all the families of the earth without saying, when they sin, I will not bless them. But God blessed everyone, you know, and blessed Abraham and said, through you, all families of the earth will be blessed. But are we remembering that? Do we continue to say God has blessed all families? Or do we curse them because we see their lifestyle is not the way our lifestyle is? One of the things that I see is that we've seen God redeeming to himself, a people for himself from every tribe and tongue and nation, colorful and diverse. God wants to redeem people back to him because he's a sovereign God. So we need to have a cultural engagement 
of every Christian, where is my obligation and everyone's obligation to continue with the dominion mandate, according to Genesis 1, where God says we have to dominate. I love what Jesus says in Matthew 5, verse 13 and 16. He says, we are the salt of the world. We are the light of the world. But when we come and realize that these other people, other families are, are not like us, or they don't believe in Christ, can we still influence them in a loving way as salt? Or can we be light in the midst of the darkness where the devil is, is going to the core and destroying even the families from the church and starting with Christian marriages and Christian children going into drugs and into everything? Now, we need to be able to encroach into the kingdom of, of, of darkness with the gospel of grace, not forcing what we believe in, but try and use the grace of God as, as, as the redeeming love of God for the people. So the people will know that the gates of hell will not prevail against the kingdom of God. We also need to be doing things practically. Like, like, like um, you know, um, where I've been, I've gone forward with my slides, where we have workshops. I've heard kids talking about that. We need to go back to teaching people with love. We need to go back and, and get youth and future leaders workshops where we talk about the issues that families do not want to talk. That we can help everyone is going through a hard time. There's a word that says that I love, be kind to everyone, because everyone is going through something. It's not only you or me, but in and outside the church. If we cannot entrench God's love and, 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 and ask God's wisdom to help us to deal with diversity by giving us workshops and, and for future leaders, youth, and go, go back to the call that caused our parents' marriages to be successful, premarital counseling, postmarital counseling, and counseling between us as we go through life. In conclusion, I just want to say, the enemy of the human race is the devil. Born again and non-born again, who tries to destroy God's original plan of creation. And in 1 Corinthians 15, it says, after that, God's kingdom will reign. In the end, it will go, be God who will reign, and He will have all the kingdoms of, of the earth under Him. Thank you, Your Excellencies, and God bless you. Thank you so much, Your Excellency, Pastor Hilda. Very powerful. Uh, I loved how actually you pulled together what uh, Pastor Oyabanji, um, His Excellency Keith and uh, Her Excellency Jackie said, you, you really brought all those aspects together and brought it so nicely. And what, what I, I need to say is that uh, when I briefed all my panelists, I just gave uh, an, an overview of what the discussion topic was going to be about. But it was lovely to see how the Holy Spirit brought a beautiful theme through each and every speaker, um, which shows me that the Holy Spirit is bringing a message across through the four panelists. Um, you were talking about being brave, being authentic, being mindful. That is exactly what um, Keith and Jackie were talking about, about you know, they were heartfelt, the vulnerable, courageous, they're having those conversations um, and be uh, God's voice of wisdom. You gave such beautiful nuggets around that. Um, and just finally, I remember, I don't know if you remember, Pastor Hilda, that long time ago, there was a show called Cheers. And there was a song which started this whole thing. And then at one stage, it says, they love to go where everybody knows their name, where everybody knows their name. And I think, you know, my, my son loves gaming and there are people who go to sports or go to a Shabin because everybody knows their name. You know, they, they have a sense of belonging. And I think in, in our family structures, I think that is probably the most important starting place for us in our families is, um, does my son really belong in my family? And does he, does my, my daughter really feel she belongs? Is her identity 
really growing in that environment. So thank you so much for bringing that uh, all together for us. We really appreciate that, Your Excellency, uh, Bossy Hilda. So there we go, uh, ladies and gents, Your Excellencies, you've heard from our four panelists. I'm, I'm looking at the time. I know that we've got another 10 minutes left and there's a little bit more on the program that we need to do, but I want to take this opportunity and maybe just open if there's any question, just for two questions for our panelists, and our panelists can each have uh, a minute or so quickly to respond to that. So um, please press on the little hand if you want to ask a question, and uh, if you want to pose it to one of our panelists to be specific on that, I'm, ask, I'm gonna ask your Excellency Lindo if you can just open it up for uh, anybody who would like to ask a question at this particular stage. Any questions from um, our people that have joined us? Okay, I don't see any hand, so I'm not going to unnecessarily take too long on this. So what I'd like to do, uh, just for all four of our panelists, if I could give you each just a minute to just conclude the, the highlights, the, the, the main points that you wanted to bring across to just reiterate that. And uh, Your Excellency, Pastor Oyebanji, if we can start with you, just for one or two of the points, just to conclude again, the highlights of your, your uh, position. Okay, thank you, Your Excellency, and thanks to all the other panelists. I think tonight, the major one word I would like to leave is that we all have a duty. There is a contest for the families of the earth. Whatever we can do to win every family over, we should do it. Check around you, check your place of work, your business place, your organization, your church, and that community where you find yourself. You realize that there is somebody there there's a need, and if that person can be reached, if that family can be reached, remember God promised Abraham, through your seed, I will bless all the family of the earth. A platform like this one is being put in place that every family of, on the earth will be won over to Christ. We need, we need to see people doing what they should do as parents, as children, as family members. Each one of us must find our role based on the word of God. And let's allow the word of God to be our model for living. If Christ is at the center of our family, we can make greater testimony for the Lord and we can advance his kingdom. God bless you all. Thank you for tonight. Thank you all the panelists. Thank you, Your Excellency. I really appreciate those words. Um, Your Excellency, Keith, I don't know if you want to speak on behalf of uh, your wife or whether she's going to be joining, but uh, just some final comments from, from the two of you. Yes, uh, so my apologies. <laughs> Jackie needed to go and deal with one of the boys, so she had to shoot off. But um, I, I, I just uh, love something Jackie said, actually. She said, uh, you know, if someone came into contact with you, would someone think that they had been in the presence of Christ? Uh, and actually, that's the way I think I see this as all summed up. The way we behave, the way we relate, what we say... Would someone, be it family, be it community, be it your neighbor, be it personal work, would they walk away from you, walk away from me and think, do you know, I've just been in the presence of Christ. Thank you. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. Uh, Keith, we really appreciate that. Uh, Pastor Hilda, some final comments from your perspective. I'd love to say that um, can we be all present and never miss the real enemy here and ask for God to help us, give us all the right strategies to be useful whilst we are on the earth, whilst we are given the opportunity to be the disciples of Christ so that the world may see Christ, so that the salt may not lose saltiness and we can be a light to every person that we meet, because God would have that all men should come to the knowledge of Jesus as their Lord and Savior. God bless you, your excellencies. 
Thank you so much, Pastor Yilda. Thank you to my panelists. I uh, really appreciate your time and expertise uh, this evening. As we um, move on with and close our program together, I'm just going to ask uh, the technical team before we take up the offering, uh, just to show uh, the GFFJ um, video clip, because it's really about what would Jesus do? What would Jesus say? And GFFJ is really there to as a vehicle for us to use our resources to be able to expand the kingdom. So uh, technical team, if you can just load the GFFJ video clip um, before I hand over to advocate Mary Bossu to take up the offering. All right, I might have caught um, your excellency, Linda. I might have caught you off guard with that one. Uh, so I'm not quite sure if you can still play the, the video clip. Otherwise, we'll, we'll just move ahead with, without the video clip. All right, I think let's, let's make a call on that. Um, I'm, let's let's hand over to uh, your Excellency Advocate Mary Bossieu from Lesotho um, to uh, do the offering for us this evening. Uh, Advocate Mary, are you are you still with us? Yes, I am. Yes, I am, and uh, thank you so much. It's an honor for me to to be doing the offerings. In fact, I, I love to do offerings so such that I even do slides for it. I don't know if uh, His Excellency uh, Lindo got my slides, but if he didn't, I can go. Um, I, my offer. That pays you, and uh, this is uh, the title of my. I have foundational scripture, and uh, the foundational scripture that I'm 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 telling is or rather, the true one. Uh, in this book. Moses spoke to the Israelites. And uh, he asked the may the God of ancestors in present times and left us. You know, your your, Lord and sorry, your, story, sorry, sorry, Your Excellency. Sorry, Your Excellency. We are, you are breaking up, so we, we'd really love to hear everything, but um, yeah, the, 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 your voice is breaking up with the network. It's, uh, I don't know if there's anything you can do with regards to your connection. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? We can hear you. It's still breaking um, up quite heavily. Can you Uh, uh, can I should I change the change now? Uh, um, let's see how I, I will host my cell phone and, and hope that um, it will work. Uh, let, let me do that just now. Do you still okay. don't hear me? We, we are hearing you uh, much better. Can you it hear, just me? hear me? <laughs> Yes, we are. It's still breaking up a little bit. Let me. Yes, and uh, it has given me notice that uh, my connection is. Uns... I I'm on another network. Okay. Can you hear me? 
it's it's sounding much better so i think go go ahead um ma'am and then okay. let's see see how it goes yes um i was at the point where i i said that moses invoked a, a blessing on the israelites and this is in deuteronomy uh, 1 first 11 and it reads may the lord God of your ancestors increase you a thousand times and bless you as he has promised. Now, I, there's a story that I want to share in this story. It is a situation where I, I gave away a gift that, that pained me. I attended a conference where the spiritual leader that was uh, leading the session there uh, requested us to do a sacrificial offering on the basis of the scripture that I've shared with you. And he said, okay, you can choose to pay $1.11, or you can pay $111, or you can pay $1,111 US dollars. And um, God spoke to me, and uh, I was God was expecting me to give a gift that would pay me. And I paid, I made a sacrificial offering of uh, 1,111. And let me tell you, Your Excellency, that at that time, I was in the process of um, finalizing my third book. And uh, I was being mentored by a Canadian publishing house. And they guided us on how to, to, to sponsor our respective manuscripts. And they gave us a stern warning that don't approach huge corporates because they won't even listen to you. And upon my return from this conference, after the sacrificial um, offering that I did, I, I want to cut the long story short. My book was sponsored by Vodacom Lesotho, by Central Bank of Lesotho, by Metropolitan Lesotho, KFC, Standard Lesotho Bank, as well as Limconkui University of Technology. And uh, I, 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 I can safely say that that sacrificial giving, that offering, that paint me is the link between what happened. And um, it is not, I didn't achieve that because of my might, but I achieved that because we serve a mighty God. And my message to you, your excellencies tonight is this, do what is painfully, possible. And guess what? God will do the impossible. And now let's talk about who, who we are. We are the ambassadors of the Global Fund for Jesus. And we all know that GFFJ is a vehicle that we use to build the kingdom of God right here on earth. We are the followers of Christ. And, and, and being a follower of Christ entails adopting a Christ-like behavior. Put differently, we need to emulate Christ. And uh, one of the things that we should emulate is to give because our Lord and Savior was a giver. Now, we also need to remember that we are children of the Most High God, and our Heavenly Father is a refreshing God, and he wants to refresh us. And where did I get that from? I got it from his word. In, in Proverbs 11, verse 25, it reads, a generous man will prosper. Whoever refreshes others will be refreshed. We are here to refresh others through the global fund for Jesus. And how do we refresh others? We we've refresh them because we are a voice of the voiceless. We are a helping hand to the helpless. We give a glimmer of hope to the hopeless. But last, but definitely not least, we are given the opportunity through the Global Fund for Jesus to behave like Christ. Friends, giving is an act of love. And what I know for sure is that love is not love unless and until you give it away. And um, let's... Um, remember, like I said, that we need to do what is painfully possible so that God can do what is 
impossible. And um, I, 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 I want to urge those that are already giving to continue to give. And for those that have not yet started to give, this is the time to emulate Christ. This is the time to give. And um, I just want to say, God bless you all. And I realized that um, uh, I've been reading for my script and I'm seeing that uh, the slides that I've given are, are not there, but this is fine as well. You got the detailed um, uh, presentation that I prepared. And God loves you. And uh, go out there and be loving and be give us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. What a powerful uh, motivation, not, not, not about offering, but about being generous and about refreshing. So thank you so much for that. I think it was uh, a beautiful motivation uh, with regards to that. Um, Your Excellency Lindo is putting on the screen the account details. Uh, if you want to also find out more, you can go to the websites to find out a little bit more or uh, for you know, contact Alice at globalfundforchrist.com. Uh, and also, if you want to be more intentional, because we've heard tonight, it's about being intentional with who we are and what we have. So I'm, I'm praying that the Holy Spirit will work in your heart to be able to be his hands and his feet, seeing that we are celebrating International uh, Mandela Day on, on Monday. Um, it's in God's hands, but we are his hands and his feet. So uh, this is a wonderful way that we can give an expression to that. So as we finalize our evening, I thank you again, once again, everybody for your patience. I know technology has not been our friend through load shedding and all the challenges we have. So thank you for the extra minutes that you're staying with us. I would like to give an opportunity for His Excellency, Mr. Tabang Nkosi from South Africa to do the a vote of thanks and the announcement. Uh, over to you, Your Excellency, Mr. Tabang. Thank you so much, um, Your Excellency. Master Shal Kud, your excellencies, I greet you all in the wonderful name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I will go through firstly the announcements and then I'll do the vote of thanks. I will not read the announcements word for word as they are displayed on the screen. <clears throat> the first announcement goes as such that the next GBR international session will be held next week, which is a Thursday, on the 21st of July, 2022, at the same time of 1700 hours to 2100 hours, Central African time here on Zoom. You're all encouraged to invite your family, your friends, and your colleagues, as these powerful sessions are free to attend. You are also advised that you can catch up on all the previous international sessions that we've held, and you can do so by visiting our website, which is www.globalbusinessroundtable.com, or simply just visit our YouTube page and just search for Global Business Roundtable. Excitingly so, the GBR Future Leaders will be hosting their summit on the 13th of August, 2022 in Niger under the theme of rising in a post-pandemic world. For more information, you can contact Her Excellency Sarah Mouni on sarah at globalbusinessroundtable.com. The leadership of GBR Walk, a woman of character department would like to invite you to the 2022 Walk Summit, which is scheduled to take place between the 2nd and the 3rd of September, 2022 in Tanzania. This exciting summit will be under the theme of RISE and build a future for the next generation. For more information, you, uh, you can contact Her Excellency, Madam Pilile Konko on pilile at globalbusinessroundtable.com. If you would like to join the GBR network, 
You can do so by visiting our website, which I'll repeat again, www.globalbusinessroundtable.com. And a reminder from our GBR and JFFJ leadership to set aside Wednesday from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. as a day of prayer and fasting. You are also invited to join the 24-hour prayer network. And for more information on how to join and also to be allocated a slot, you can contact His Excellency Pastor Oluwadomi Oyebanji on Oyebanji or Oluwadomi, my apologies, at globalbusinessroundtable.com. Or you can contact Ms. Siska Adamson on Siska at globalbusinessroundtable.com. And those are the global announcements. <clears throat> Would like to move now to the vote of thanks, starting with our program director, His Excellency, Mr. Charles Kud, all the way from South Africa. Would like to thank you, Your Excellency, for a sterling job of facilitating this session on the topic of creating a kingdom culture within the diverse family structure or structures. We thank you, Excellency. We'd also like to thank His Excellency, John Suira, who did the opening prayer all the way from Malawi. We thank you very much, Your Excellency. And we'd also like to thank our main presenters, starting first with Pastor Oluwadomi Oyabanji, all the way from Nigeria. Mrs. Jackie Tripp and Mr. Keith Tripp, who are all the way in the UK. And then also Pastor Hilda Peto, who's here in South Africa. I would like to thank you very much for the powerful presentations that you've given. We thank you very much for having taken out your time, Your Excellencies, to come and share the nuggets with us. We are grateful and thank you. We'd also like to thank Your Excellency Advocate Mary Busiu from Lesotho, who did the offering and shared her testimony as well. We thank you very much, Your Excellency. And as we proceed to close, we'd like to thank Her Excellency, Ms. Veronica Chikare from Botswana, who's going to come and do the closing prayer. And but lastly, we'd also like to thank all of you for having taken out your time to come and join these sessions um, that GBR is hosting. We thank you very much, Your Excellency, and God bless. Thank you, Your Excellency, Mr. Tabang. I uh, really appreciate your uh, vote of uh, appreciation and valuing the people that made today happen. So thank you so much for that. So without a further ado, I'm gonna welcome uh, Her Excellency, Ms. Veronica Tikari from Botswana to do the closing prayer for us. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. Good evening, Your Excellency. Shall we bow down our heads to pray? Dear Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you for this wonderful time. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the divine appointment that we had with you tonight. We thank you, Father God, that we were able to interrogate issues of culture within diverse family structures. Thank you, Father God, for the revelations and the insights that came through. Thank you for the, the revelation that, Lord, family is an extension of your glory here on earth. And so, Father, we just want to thank you. And we want to pray that, Lord Jesus, as we continue on this journey, you help us to intentionally conduct generative and courageous conversations and be always conscious of others and take responsibility to build each other for your glory so that, Lord, your glory might reign in this world and your peace might reign in this world. Father, we thank you for each and every speaker. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that you have given us the insight, and we thank you that, Lord, you have given us the knowledge that we didn't have before. Thank you for the strategies, Lord, that came through tonight. And Heavenly Father, we just want to pray as we disperse from this wonderful platform, Bless each one of us. May your peace, the peace of God that surpasses human understanding, cover each and every one of us. 
until we meet again next week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. And as uh, Prof. Seleku always says, amen and amen. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for being with us uh, uh, between seven and nine, quarter past nine. We thank you for your grace on the 15 minutes. We bless you and have a wonderful rest of the week and weekend. God bless and goodbye. Thank you.